So, this is a parcel from Scan. The funny thing is, um, you might be looking at the date this has gone up. This was the first wave. Um, where do I cut for that to open? This was, as I was saying, this was the first wave. It's just that, well, I'm not good at getting stuff done. I'm, I'm good at sitting in front of my computer at exactly 2 p.m. and that's about it. So this is the third desirable recent GPU that I'm unboxing here in recent days. I'm quite conscious of that. Um, my reason for getting the 3090 was it was for a test bench. My reason for getting the 3070 is it was for the same test bench after I realised the 3090 was ridiculous overkill. My reason for getting this card though, well I don't have a good one, however at least I'm not going to mine on it. Um, maybe I should have opened this box before I started filming but instead you get the jeopardy, you get to watch this and go ooh is he going to slice his finger open? And use a serrated blade here instead, maybe that will help. So you might be wondering how it is that I got hold of an RX 6800 on launch day, although it didn't ship for... Um, it's kind of been really busy and DPD have had some trouble, apparently. Um, but yes, how I got hold of this beauty. And for that matter, speaking of getting things on launch day, I can't remember if I actually unboxed this. However, you might also wonder how I got hold of that on launch day. Also from Scan, um, the answer is much the same for both. I've got a good internet service provider, so it's not actually fibre. Well, it's fibre to the cabinet, but it's no, none of this full fibre stuff. But I'm with Zen Internet, and I'm pretty sure they're based in Manchester near where Scan are. So that's tip one, good internet service provider. Tip two, you don't have to spam refresh, but just, you know, keep an eye on the time, make sure that you refresh the page, you know, when the time comes. There's no point spamming refresh before 2 p.m. At least when it comes to scan, they go up dead on, bob on 2 p.m. Um, tip number three, this is the big one, right? PayPal. I paid via PayPal. And on scan, paying via PayPal means that you don't have to enter all of your address details and everything. You only have to click the button and enter your PayPal password. I'm pretty sure that made the difference. So, there is your hot tip on how to pick up things like this. Um, maybe, maybe you want a 6900 XT and you'll find it useful. Or maybe that's not going to be any use to you now, now that everything's already launched. But, maybe it'll help. Anyway. I've been blathering for four minutes and I haven't opened this box, so I had better do that. That's what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. I don't actually normally unbox high-end hardware here, it's just, you know, there's been a lot going on at the moment. So, you know, normally I just take videos of boxes, but this is a box. I'm here, you know. So we've got this cardboard in a box. Um, and that's got its own tab to open. There we go. Right. So we have a quick installation guide there. These are sometimes good for a laugh. Well, well that's fairly um, 
that's fairly comprehensive. So, unplug your computer, take the side panel off, take the PCIe slot cover off, jam it in, make sure that it clicks, screw it in, plug the power cables in, side panel back on, connect the monitor, reconnect the power. Uh, I think that's the BIOS switch it's on about in that panel. And then drivers, I guess. Do we have text as well? We have a lot of text in various languages. Ah. Here's our English panel. I'll pan the camera over that for the benefit of the camera. You can uh, Pause it any way you need to. There's a driver installation link. How modern. Good for them. Right. The card itself. We've got this nicer foam cutout here that's exactly GPU shaped. Look at that. And then the card itself. Now, I've looked at pictures of these, and my opinion of the pictures is that they looked quite plasticky, if I'm honest. So I'll be very interested what it's actually made of. Oh, it's got some gravity to it, I'll say that. Got a nice back plate there. Oh yeah, that's the other thing that I did. I went for power colour. So it's a less well-known brand, but I was kind of thinking, if I go for like Asus or Sapphire, everyone's going to go for Asus and Sapphire. So I went for Power Colour. They're also in the middle on price, it's you know, 20 quid either way. And it seems, it seems to have worked out. And now... I have my hands on it. I can report. I don't. I genuinely can't tell if that's plastic or metal. I think. I think it might be like metal but with some kind of coating on it. That definitely seems like plastic. And then the fans themselves have this on the edge as well. I think that's plastic as well. I can't tell if this outside is plastic or metal, honestly. But yes, there is the RX 6800 in all its triple fanned glory. Big heatsink, big gap at the side to let all the air out, which is always good to see. Screws at the back. Um, because there are like OEM cases where those actually screw onto something. All enthusiast cases should have that feature, that's a good feature. More gaps to let the air out along this side. There's your labels. Nice little embossed R there on the back plate. And that's interesting. So I'm looking at, we do have a warranty seal on the cooler, but I'm looking at the back plate here and we've got cutouts. Right, well, while I'm here, I'll show you the I.O. as well, much as you'd expect to see it. Do we have anything else in the box? No. Yep. That's everything. Right. I'm very curious what's with those cutouts. So I'll be right back. I'm back and I've got a screwdriver. So this is um, uncharted territory for me. I normally just look at boxes, but I am curious. It does look 
Just so the entire back plate can maybe come off. But let's uh let's see what's behind these cutouts, shall we? Wait. Oh I am a numpty. They aren't removable. They're not cutouts per se. It's just an effect. This is all one solid piece. Oh dearie dearie me. Right. Well, there you are. I'll leave that silliness in anyway. I wonder if the entire back plate can come off. You know what, while I'm here. I haven't even tried it yet, and here I am disassembling a, uh, what was it, like 500 quid GPU? How bad is it that I don't even know how much I paid? Um, there's a receipt in the box and the receipt didn't say either, whatever. Right, can I remove the back plate? We've got movement. Oh! Hey! Just like that. Right. So. No thermal pads. It is metal of some sort, but purely cosmetic because it doesn't have any thermal pads to anything. And there we have the back of the PCB. We've got an IR3517 just there, an Infineon XDPE132G5D, which I think is a 16 phase controller. And you know what? I don't want to break that. I like having a warranty. Uh, I guess the other thing to note is our GDDR6 chips. There's none on the back. So that means all 16 gig of memory is on the front, which means they're higher density chips than Nvidia is using. So that's interesting. And that's about all we can really glean from looking at this. Right, well, I'll pop it back together, which I'll probably, um, I'll fade through it, I'll do a fancy editing thing, or fancy by my standards. And then I'll be back in a moment to do my usual thing of panning over the box, so I'll see you then. And fade back in. Right, and you're in my hand now. So I've got the back plate back on. Um, one other thing occurred to me while I was screwing it on, which is another reason not to break this and not take take the whole card apart, is AMD are using this really fancy uh, graphite thermal interface thing that's like kind of halfway between a paste and a pad. And you don't want to break that because you can't replace it yourself and whatever you replace it with is... Thermal pastes can perform better but they won't be as stable, they won't last as long. So ideally, you want to keep that on there as it is, because that will last better than anything else you could put on it. Oh, and I suppose one other thing, which is... Uh, seems pretty well braced, you've got a nice... You know, it's all metal on all sides, so... Pop that down over there. It's not going to sag, I don't think. I am not concerned about any sagging. Right, well, if you're just here for the unboxing, you can stop watching now, but I am going to go over the box because it's what I do. Um, so this is our box. We've got points here, 4K ultra... Sorry, I can't talk today. 
4K Ultra HD, 16 gigabytes of memory, PCIe 4.0. So PCIe 4.0, a bit new, but it's kind of we've had it for a little bit now. 4K, that's the monitor support. 16 gig, 16 gig, that's quite a lot. Um, Nvidia's card in the same price range, the 3070, only has 8 gig. So that's kind of impressive. 16 gigs is a lot. There's one side of the box. There's the other side of the box. We've got our stock label from Scan. And that's it. Look along the base. Much the same. We've got our uh, model details there. Have a look along the top. And finally, the back of the box. Key features. AMD RDNA2 architecture hardware ray tracing, kind of. They have hardware acceleration for the most performance intensive function. They don't have hardware acceleration for everything. 7 nanometer GPU, yes. GTDR6, yes. Video streaming up to 8K, okay, so that'll be their video decoder, I suppose. FreeSync technology, so that means that your monitor um, only displays the frames when they're ready rather than trying to keep to a regular refresh rate. Very good for reducing latency and getting smoother motion. AMD Fidelity effects, which is all like sharpening and stuff, I think. Radeon VR Ready Premium, so you can pop this with a VR headset and it won't make you throw up. Radeon Image Sharpening, so that's AMD's equivalent to um, first generation NVIDIA DLSS, I think it is. Um, where it gives you better image quality for the same resolution. And our outputs display point display port 1.4 with DSC, that's display stream compression. HDMI 2.1 VRR, that's variable refresh rate. There are our minimum system requirements. So 650 watt power supply, that's interesting. Minimum 8 gig of system memory, I doubt that's enforced, I bet I could run this on 1 gig if I wanted to, I'm sure. But yes, all the usual, you know, no need for me to read all of that out. More feature boxes up here for some of the same things that were listed. And some bump for that. Oh, here's, our, here's why our architecture is better. Here's what Fidelity FX and FreeSync do. Oh, notes not compatible with Windows 7. What's that a note for? Um, aha! Hardware ray tracing up here. Note 1, not compatible with Windows 7. 650 watt power supply. Note 2. Minimum recommended system power supply wattage is based on the specific graphics card and the typical power requirements of other system components. Your system may require more or less power. OEM and other pre-assembled PCs may have different power requirements, so that means you might see this in a PC from a system integrator with a 500 watt supply and not to, not to be um, worried by that. Supported operating systems include Linux and Windows 7, that's very nice. Note 3 does not support all features, including but not limited to hardware ray tracing. So no ray tracing on Windows 7. That's fine. And we've got our bump along the bottom, power colours, so that's a subsidiary or a trademark of T World Corporation. And we've got our uh, AMD copyrights over here. And that's your box. Uh, so, as always, if for some reason you're watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Cheers. Bye.